Good morning, Hilton Baptist, and anybody else who might be watching this. Today, uh, I have a devotion for you from Revelation chapter 6, the uh, commentary I've been looking at as I've been working through these passages by Daryl Johnson says that many pastors stop preaching Revelation at the end of chapter 5, and you can see why. It gets an awful lot more difficult from chapter 6 onwards, but we're going to have a go at it, and I hope you will carry on following with me as we do so. I want to remind you from the early part of Revelation chapter 5, what we're talking about when we talk about the scroll and the seals. The scroll uh, was in the right hand of the one who sat on the throne of heaven, and uh, the seven seals kept it all intact. The scroll represents God's plan for rectifying what is wrong with the world, for destroying all that is in the way of his purposes, for bringing about the kingdom of God on this world, and for um, uh, causing things to happen according to God's will going forward. The scroll is vitally important. It determines what God is going to do about this world. But it's been sealed and kept together, and no one was worthy to open the seals. That caused John great grief. How is God going to fix the problems of this world if no one can open the seals? But then remember, there was one who was the lion of the tribe of Judah, but when John saw him, he was like a little lamb that had been slain. Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, he is the one who can open the seals. And in Revelation chapter 6, those seals are opened. In fact, in Revelation chapter 6, we just have the first six seals. Let me remind you, or take you through the first four. John, uh, as the seals are opened, tells us that there will be greater conflict There'll be greater violence. There'll be greater injustice and hunger, greater sickness and death, because as evil people do their evil deeds, that's what happens, and that's what we've experienced. And not least now, as the greater sickness has come into the world through this terrible virus that is keeping us all at home. Seal 5 gets opened and reminds us that the church is not immune from the, the happenings of the first four seals. In fact, some in the church are on the receiving end of the violence and evil that happens because of it. We are told when the fifth seal, seal is opened, uh, he saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain because of the word of God and the testimony that they had maintained. They called out in a loud voice, How long, Sovereign Lord? holy and true, until you judge the inhabitants of the earth and avenge our blood. Then each of them was given a white robe, and they were told to wait a little longer, until the full number of their fellow servants, their brothers and sisters, were killed just as they had been. The history of the world includes those who stand and make a, make a witness for Jesus, often suffering often experiencing hardship, sometimes even paying the ultimate price, the loss of their life for their witness. As I was thinking about this passage today, I was praying for our missionaries and those who have made great sacrifices as they have stood up for Jesus and presented the gospel and been a witness in parts of the world that would not otherwise have experienced that. The truth of the matter is that many of us think that the first century was when there were the most martyrs. But actually, the 20th century thus far, of all the 20th centuries of the history of the church, the 20th century has given the altar of God the most martyrs. And the truth is, is that 20, the 21st century may not be any different. But what I can tell you, is that while there might have been more martyrs in the 20th century, there were many more who came to faith. Of all the number of Christians in the history of the church, more than half of them came to faith in the 20th century. The church expanded at an exponential rate. The church grew more than it had ever grown before because there were people 
who witnessed Jesus and were prepared to suffer and sacrifice, and some even die, so that that could come about. And the reality is, is that as God uh, works his purposes out in this world, and don't worry, there will be justice, the time will come when that blood will be avenged, but as God works his purposes out, evil happens, and some of us get caught up in that evil. But as we witness for Christ, so the church grows. And as we witness for him in a way that represents him as a lamb that was slain, so we too are weak and sometimes seemingly foolish. We recognize that through our testimony, through our witness, actually God's wisdom and God's power is demonstrated. And the church grows and people come to faith and many are saved. And so let's keep witnessing. Let's keep being the church. And let's even risk having to make a sacrifice or two for that. And may it not be the ultimate sacrifice for any of us, but who knows? It could be. But let's keep witnessing for Jesus so that his church can grow and his purposes can be worked out. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow.